Senya. This is my sister, Gina. And this is my uncle, David. And today we're going to be making some Switch Adapted toys. If you don't have the instructions, follow the link below in the description to the Instructables to print your instructions out. Let's go over some of the stuff you'll be needing. You're going to need an electronic toy. You're going to need a switch to activate your toy. A 1 8 inch audio jack. A multimeter. A pair of wire cutters and wire strippers. Some wire splice connectors. These UG connectors from 3M take wire from 19 gauge to 26 gauge, which is pretty thin, which most of these toys have. And a pair of pliers to close them up. You'll need a thread cutter and some thread. I like to use fabric glue so I can go easy on the stitching. And finally, your instruction manual so you can follow along. Okay, now that we have all our materials gathered, let's get started with the modification. Yeah. We're going to begin by finding the switch that activates a toy. Check that it's working by activating the toy first. Play those ring, are you listening? Okay, so we took out the batteries from one of the toys and one of the other toys didn't work. And that's one of the reasons why we checked that the toy is working. We don't want to finish the modification and have the toy not work and think that our modification caused the toy not to work. So that's why you want to check that the toy works before you start so that you know you have a working toy to begin with. Okay, let's continue with the other toy. Once we verify that he's working, we're going to take out the batteries. So one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding a place to put our audio jack. This is our switches in the hand in this case, and we're going to open up the stitching and pull the wires out and then figure out how to put our audio jack somewhere, probably down here, so it's out of the way and so that when we connect our switch, it won't interfere with the operation of the toy. Okay, we'll begin by taking out some of the stitching by the button. You could use a thread cutter or you can also use a razor blade. Here are the two wires we're looking for. Pull those out. Now we have to look for a place for the audio jack. This looks like a good place right here. We'll have to try to fish it through the body out to over here. Now we move on to one of the most confusing parts of this modification. But let's just begin at the beginning. You have a switch that's connected to a 1 8 inch audio jack. If you can see, it has two connections, a tip and a sleeve. That goes connected into our audio jack. I stripped the ends of the wires using our wire stripper and I connected each wire from this audio jack to the multimeter. When you press the button, it'll close the switch. It gets confusing because not all audio jacks will have two wires. Some will have three wires. And not all our activation buttons will have two sides to it. Some will have three connectors to it. Ultimately, whether you have two or three contacts, we're trying to make a connection between the tip and the sleeve or the tip and the ring and the sleeve. If your audio jack has three wires, just make sure to connect the ring and the sleeve together so that when you connect it to a button, whether it's a TRS button or a TS button, it'll connect, make the connection between the tip, the ring and the sleeve. Or if you have a TS button, it'll also make the connection between the tip and the sleeve. So we'll begin with an example of an audio jack with two wires and a button with two contacts. There's really nothing to check here other than that our button is actually working and our connector 
audio jack connector is actually working as well. We know that one is a tip and one is a sleeve. Here's an example of an audio jack that has three wires to it. One is going to be the tip, one is going to be the sleeve, and one is going to be the ring. We have to identify which is which. Begin by connecting one of the wire leads to one of the multimeter leads. So these are obviously connected together because even without touching the buttons together, it's already making a connection. If we hook it up to the other wire, it should turn on when we hit the button. So now we know that these two will go together, in this case red and orange, and the brown one will go on the other switch. The next case would be to have an audio jack with two wires and a button with three contacts on it. In this case, because it's only two wires on our audio jack. Again, it doesn't matter. You're just checking that when you hook up the plug and you push the button, that your multimeter shows that it's making contact. I actually don't have a button that's connected to this wire right now, so I'm just talking through them. The next example would be to have an audio jack with three wires and our button with three contacts. Again, we're looking for the two wires that make contact with the one wire and you check them two at a time and then you swap out one of the wires check that two of the wires will make the same connection with the opposite wire verify that with your multimeter we're going to go ahead and work with the audio jack that has two wires go ahead and cut off the ends that you strip the wire from so we can insert this into our connector. Yeah. Because we're using an audio jack with only two wires, we only need two splice connectors. If we were using an audio jack with three wires, we'd use three splice connectors. We're going to go ahead and put the connectors on now. And they're a little bit hard to go on at first, but basically what you're doing is you're grabbing the connector, you're grabbing the wire, you're putting it through the connector slot there and you're pressing in place. And then once it's in place, you can actually verify that by looking underneath. And this wire right now, I heard it snap. So we're gonna do the same though, but we're gonna do it on the actual bear. So let's go ahead and put one of them in. And I'm pressing up with my forefinger and down with my thumbs to snap it into place. And there it's in place and you can verify through the clear backing and I'll go ahead and put the other one in as well and one thing about these connectors is once once you actually crimp them down and they're in you won't be able to take them out so it's better if you do feel like you messed up and you want to do it again just leave it in there and add another connector but those are both in place and we're ready to add our wires So I'm gonna turn it over to see where, I'm gonna add the wire and it's on this side here. And I had the wire on one side and I'm gonna crimp that down. And you just press it, make sure it's in before you crimp it down. And then you begin to press it. And just make sure that when you're finished pressing it, that it's nice and flush and you'll be able to verify that because the connector won't move anymore and the wire will not come out. And I'll... After double checking this crimp, I noticed that it's not flush. So again, if you just wanna make sure that it is flush, otherwise it might not make a good connection. I went ahead and pressed it again and now we have a flush connection. So we're putting the other wire in the other connector now. Here, turn it over, make sure that it's fully inserted, and you can verify that by looking underneath.
you're going to pinch the two wires together. And once you make sure that the wire is inside, you're going to go ahead and crimp it closed. Like this? Mm hmm Okay, now that you have the wire inside, here, let me help you crimp it closed. Okay. And we're going to continue to crimp it closed. And once it's closed, we'll connect it back to our switch and make sure that the connection is okay before we close everything back okay, up. Okay, so we're gonna check that our connection is okay by connecting our button to our switch. And I've already replaced the batteries. And then we're trying to turn the Labels ring. Okay, that's good. Why don't you give it another press? So now we need to fish our wire back through the arm and onto the back here. I opened up a space here and we'll glue gun it about right here. We can put our connectors back inside with the wires and we'll replace the fluff and take out the batteries as well. I went ahead and stuffed the bear again with the stuffing and I'm going to use some of this glue around the stitching where I'm going to be putting the stitches at. And the reason I use the glue is so that I don't have to stitch everything back so precisely. <laughs> now that we're all wrapped up with a hand, we'll go ahead and move on to the connector. I'm going to go ahead and make a hole about right here and I already took the screw cap off the audio jack. I'll glue it in place and then we'll glue and stitch this back up as well. Okay, I went ahead and threaded the connector through. It's kind of hidden but I think it'll be fine. And I'm going to go ahead and just glue gun it in place. I went ahead and glued in the adapter jack. And it actually didn't require any stitching because everything just kind of got glued in place. Now we're going to put the batteries back and give it another try. And that concludes the modification for our switch adapter toy. One thing to note is that when you are gluing the connector into place, not to put too much glue into the connector body or it will prevent the switch from making contact, which is what happened to us a few minutes ago. Thanks for watching. Bye guys!